Have you been wondering how to make Flappy Bird a microbit? Well stick around because in this Scratch Flappy Bird game tutorial for microbit, we'll use inspiration from the original to create Letty Bird in this multi-part series coming your way. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If that sounds like something that you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit the show more button down below to check out a bunch of links that relate to this video. If you don't yet have a micro bit, you can support this channel by getting yours through using the link in the description below. But hey, let's go make this game. Welcome to the Ladybird tutorial. Just a couple of things to kick us off before we get underway. This tutorial is based on the game Flappy Bird that you can find on Scratch and FlappyBird.io. Give full credit to the creator, Don Ewan, and this is just an adaptation for the microbit. So here's a version of Ladybird on the microbit simulator. We're just gonna get it underway, and this dot here represents our Ladybird. Our Ladybird needs to find the gap between all these obstacles. We can press the A button and the B button to go down and through. If we collide with an obstacle, it's game over. Each obstacle that we pass through gives us a point. I'm assuming you already know how to connect your micro bit and it is currently connected to your project. I'm working in a starter project that you can find in the description below, but you can just use an empty project as well. I've just got a few little bits here that will help illustrate some ideas. I've just got a couple of empty sprites here in the sprite pane and I've got one called plan and that is essentially everything that we're gonna need to do to build this game. Feel free to Pause this video and have a crack at that now, otherwise strap yourself in. We'll be doing all of our code inside the empty game sprite. The first thing that we're going to create is a list called LEDs and what that will be is a list of 25 values that will control the switches of the LEDs here. So the first five slots here refer to the top row. So I turn them all on using the simulator. You can see that the first five slots have been highlighted. So this is 5 to 10, this is 11 to 15, and so on. Back over in our project, in the game sprite, make a list, call it LEDs. Our LEDs list is empty, so let's go ahead and populate it. To do that, I'm gonna create a custom block, and that's gonna be called Reset LEDs. I'm gonna be using custom blocks quite a bit in this project. There's a card in the top corner if you're a bit fuzzy on them. First, we wanna delete all items of the LEDs, then repeat for 25 times, adding the off switch. Let's go do that. You can see here, we've now got 25 items that are switched off. To display these LEDs on the micro bit, we need to go get the display stack block from the micro bits category, then get your LEDs reporter block and stick it inside. I click that and it would work. I've just turned on the first five positions of our LEDs list. If I press this now, the micro bit should illuminate. Now, if I reset the LEDs and I display that now, it should clear the display. I'm not a fan of sprinkling this stack block throughout our code, so I'm gonna make a custom block here called render LEDs. We wanna run it without screen refresh, and we're going to stick that stack block inside of it. So now we can call render LEDs whenever we wanna force the display of the micro bit. The next thing that we wanna be able to do is illuminate a specific column here. So what I'm talking about is when one full column is illuminated. We can say like, hey, column five, turn on all those switches. Now we know that each each position has an index, so we can refer to those. Let's go code it. Let's make a custom block. We're gonna call it illuminate column. We're gonna have the label here, column number, and we're gonna add an input here, and that will tell us the exact column. Press OK. Let's drag it over, give yourself some space. We're gonna need a variable for this. We're gonna call it counter. It can be for this sprite only. We wanna set counter to zero as soon as we call this function. And we want to repeat this five times, once for each row. What we want to do next is multiply counter by the number five. So right now it should be zero times five and we know that is equal to zero. On its own zero isn't that useful, but what we can do is add this value to the current column. So if the current column is one, it would be one plus zero and that would refer to our very first slot here. Drag out an addition operator, slot in the counter times five and then we're going to add the column to it. This piece of code here is going to refer to each index in the column that we want to refer to because we want to switch all these to one. Let's go do that now. Drag out a replace item block and the item number that we want to replace is what we have just created and what we want to replace it with is the number one so that we can turn it on. And let's put that now. In there and lastly what we want to do is we want to increment that counter value by one okay let's go test out what we've done i've just got a little code stack block here where we're going to reset the leds we're going to illuminate the first column which is this one here and then we're going to render those columns so i'm going to click this blocks and watch what happens with the micro bit boom that first column illuminates let's illuminate that second column let's illuminate that third column let's illuminate that fourth column and now the fifth column so we've got our column illuminated now, but that's no good because in our game, we've got obstacles and obstacles have a gap for us to get through. 
The best way to do that is to refer to the row number. So for this obstacle, we can have the gap through row four of our array. Let's go code it. We're going to be using our counter variable because our counter variable essentially refers to each row of our micro bit. Now our counter starts off at zero and we don't have zero row here. So we're just going to add one to counter. We need to be able to specify a row number in the function here. So let's right click and edit it and we can add a label and that label is going to be called row gap or whatever you want to call it. Then we need to add an input and that's going to be the row number. So I'm just going to call that row num. Cool. Now if that counter plus one value is equal to the row number, we don't want to turn that switch to one. So what we can do is go counter plus one is equal to that row number is when we don't want to add it. So that is when it's not equal. Okay, drag out an if block and we're going to sandwich in the replace item but not the change counter. We want to get that boolean block that we just created and slot that inside the if statement. So what this will say now is if the counter plus one is not equal to the specified row number, then we're not going to eliminate it. All right, I've just got our little stack box here to test this out. So we're going to specify the fifth column and the fourth row of that, and there should be a gap as an obstacle now. And there is. All right, I think we're about ready to get our bird onto the micro bit. The bird can be in any position in the first column. So it can be on one, six, 11, 16, and 21 but it can't be on more and it can't go forward. So let's go ahead and code that. I've just dragged out our two hat blocks here from the micro bit category when the A button is pressed and when the B button is pressed. When the A button is pressed, we want Ladybird to go up and when we press the B button, we want Ladybird to go down. We're going to be using a variable for our Ladybird and it's gonna be called bird position. And it's just going to be a number of the specific index where our bird is at. Just for now on a green flag click, I'm going to set bird position to 11, which is the middle spot of our first column. So when we press the A button, we want to take away five from our bird position. Let's do that. When we press our B button, we want to add five. So let's just duplicate that and change it to five. Okay, I'm going to press the A button. Watch the bird position variable on the stage. It goes to six, now it's one. Ooh, now it's negative four. So we need to handle for that. I'm going to press the B button now and we've got our index updating beautifully, but we need to handle for a limit so we don't exceed the number that it can go. All right, so the way we'll do this is we're gonna get our bird position. And we're gonna see if our bird position is not equal to the specific limit, then we can change the value of bird position. So what does that actually mean? So if we're going up, we know that the limit is one. So if the bird position is equal to one, then we no longer wanna change the position by negative five. So if the bird position is not equal to one, then allow it to continue. Let's wrap that change block inside an if block and let's stick that boolean block inside the if block, just like that. Let's duplicate and change it for our B press. Got some duplication going on here, and this is a great opportunity to create another custom block. Click make a block. It's going to be called move bird by amount. And then we're going to give it a value of the amount. We're gonna add a label, and it's gonna be called limit. And then we'll just give it a parameter of limit number. Cool. So what we can do, is duplicate that code. And where we've got the amount value, we can just stick the amount in there. And where we've got the limit number, we can just feed it the limit. Now we can just get this one block here and move it by the amount that is in our code and specify the limit. We can do the same thing for a B button press. So we wanna move it by five and the limit for our B is 21. And we can just get rid of those blocks of code. The neat thing about doing it this way is we can also set it up for keyboard testing, because I'm a bit lazy and I can't always be bothered pressing the micro bit. So when the up arrow is pressed, let's just do the exact same thing. And then when the down arrow is pressed, let's just change the move amounts, boom. So I'm just gonna use the keyboard keys now to demonstrate this as I press up. We've hit our limit of one and now I can't exceed it. We can go all the way down to 21 and we can't exceed it. At the moment, we're only changing an index value here, a number. What we need to go ahead and do is find that index position 21 and change it so it's one and then feed that back to our micro bit so we can update the LED display. I'm just gonna create a custom block and this one's gonna be called draw LEDs. Click okay. We'll use this custom block to illuminate any of the columns as well as the position of our Lady Bird. Let's first focus on Lady Bird. Grab out the replace item block from the list category. We wanna replace the item at the bird position with the number one. Recall earlier in the tutorial when I was using this little stack block sequence to force a display on the micro bit. Well, we're gonna be using this and instead of calling render LEDs at the end of it, and instead of illuminating the column number, we're going to draw the LEDs after resetting them. And then we wanna take these two blocks and find that render LEDs function and stick it inside. First, we wanna reset the LEDs 
and then we need to draw the LEDs and then we can display them and that will be our render function. Lastly, we wanna go ahead and render after we've moved the bird. Okay, I've got the micro bit in my hands now. I'm just gonna press the A button and the B button. You can see our bird is moving up and down the first column. We might park it there for part one of our Ladybird tutorial. Here's what we've coded so far at a glance. In the next tutorial, we're going to be adding some animating obstacles. We need to detect some collisions, and we also need to add some gameplay, such as starting and finishing the game, as well as adding some score. It's time for a scratchy question, and I want to know, did you find it helpful to have a plan set out in the project editor? Share your answer in the comment section below. Hey, thanks for checking out this Fluffy Bird tutorial. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you're new around here, and have a scout of some of my other content on your screen right now. You can show your support for this channel by checking out exclusive content on my Patreon page, my funky red bubble tees, or by joining the mailing list. All links below in the description. But until then, I'm off to go find a way. I'll catch you in the next one.